Hello and welcome to St. Peter and St. Paul United Church of Christ. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. We're so glad you've tuned in to worship with us. We're in the chapel at St. Peter and St. Paul UCC in Cincinnati. And uh, wherever you are, we're glad that you are here and worshiping with us. Joel and Mary Beth and Aaron Westermeyer are here with me in the chapel. And we thank them for their uh, hard work in putting together our videos every week. We hope that the service is a blessing to you. And now may God's Spirit be among us as we worship God together. Please join me for our responsive call to worship. Our God knows us intimately. God, you knew us before we knew us, long before we knew ourselves. Our God is holy. Holy God, you consecrate us. Our God will reassure. Holy God, you will give us words to speak. Our first hymn is hymn number 25, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please join me for our invocation. Nurturing, Nurturing God, 
We rejoice that you placed us in the womb and called us forth. You call us to build and to plant. Give us the blueprints as we build and bless our hands as we plant. We rejoice in knowing that our steps are guided by you. You are reliable and we delight ourselves in your presence. We give thanks as you deliver us from fear and let your love have its way in us. Embolden us to speak your truth into power and let the power of your truth always be evident in us. Amen. God knows us and loves us. When we confess to our sins to God and receive God's mercy, we open ourselves to become God's instruments of peace and healing. Please join me for our prayer of confession. Transforming God, too often we have been afraid to speak out against the injustices of this world. We have worshiped in ways that made us feel good rather than honor you in our words and deeds. Show us the path to faithful living. Show us how to build beloved and just communities. Teach us how to do your work in this world. Empower us to plant seeds of love, faith, and hope. May we bloom where we have been planted to your glory. Amen. The mystery that we name God leads us into all truth. Feel the gentle nudges without and within, helping us to course correct. Life in the Spirit is not static and neither are we. Let the grace of God help us to build that which lasts and plant what nourishes. Amen. Amen. We come now to our time of pastoral prayer. This is a very special time as we join our hearts and our spirits in prayer, turning to God, asking for God to bless us and to respond to the needs that we bring to God in worship. Uh, perhaps you have needs that you bring today. We invite you to do that. Perhaps you have joys that you want to offer God thanks for. We invite you to do that as well. And if you have a prayer request that you would like to share with the church, we invite you to use the link that's right below the video, and we will be glad to share that at our in-person worship service on Sunday morning and in our weekly email update to the congregation. There are many needs in our world. And we lift them all up to God today. We ask that God will be with our world's leaders with the various challenges that, that, uh, that are faced. We pray for peace in our world wherever there is conflict. We pray for those who are facing hunger, those who are uh, facing uh, illness. We pray for those who uh, uh, are uh, experiencing COVID. Uh, we ask that God would be very near to them. And now let us turn to God and ask God to receive the prayers that we offer together. Oh Lord, summer is almost over and we wonder where the time has gone. We look at all the plans we had, those that we had accomplished and those that are now to be put aside for another time. We look ahead to the busy year of witness and service and wonder if we are ready to truly work for you. The rest that we craved at the beginning of the summer now seems to have slipped rapidly away, leaving us breathlessly facing the upcoming autumn season. Help us, O oh Lord, feel your strengthening presence with us. Help us place our trust in you, knowing that you will empower and enable us to be in service. As we have brought our concerns of those who are dear to us to this time of prayer, seeking your healing, compassionate love, let us also be willing to place our needs and concerns before you. Give us a powerful sense of restoration and reconciliation to you. Gracious God, as young people go back to school, we pray that you would be with them as they begin a new school year. Keep them safe, help them to study and to grow, 
and to become the people that you are calling them to be. Be with those who teach them and those who administer and, and run the school buildings and school programs, administrators and staff, teachers alike. Bless them in the important work that they are doing in nurturing and raising and challenging our young people. And now, gracious God, we come to you in these few moments of silence with our personal prayers, and we ask that you would receive each of our prayers that we offer to you today. We offer our prayers spoken and unspoken to you, O Lord, and in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray with a prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. We read about the call of Jeremiah to his prophetic ministry. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Our Gospel reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, beginning at verse 10. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. May God bless the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, what does a baby computer call his father? Data. I've got some computer people in here. I knew they would appreciate that one. My wife asked me the other day when I got 
where, uh, where I got so much candy, I said, oh, I always have a few Twix up my sleeves. <laughs> well, the prophet Jeremiah was a young man when he received his call from God to preach. Before he knew what was happening, he heard God say to him, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. What a dramatic calling that was. God declares that even before Jeremiah was born, God had designated him to be a prophet, to speak to the nations, to be God's mouthpiece, to share God's word. What a powerful, dramatic scene this is. And Jeremiah's response was essentially this. Whoa, hold on there, Lord. Not so fast. Are you sure about this? There must be some mistake. I'm only a boy. I'm a youth. I don't know how to be a prophet. I don't know how to preach. You need to stop this calling right now and find someone else to speak for you because I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I'm not up for this. Go consecrate someone else. We've all been where Jeremiah has been, haven't we? We may have had an inner feeling within us that God was stirring and calling us to do something, a new work, a new approach, a new uncharted territory for us. And we often respond like, Jeremiah, not me, Lord, I can't do that. I'm not talented enough, I'm not gifted enough, and I'm not able to do that. I just can't do it. I wonder how often we talk ourselves out of God's blessings because we cannot see a way forward. We cannot see how we can possibly fulfill the task that God is placing before us and within us. Jeremiah was displaying what we might call no way thinking. I don't see a way this will work, so my answer is no way. Theologian Monica A. Coleman offers a different way of thinking, however. In her book, Making a Way Out of No Way, Coleman points to a concept expressed uh, in a phrase that has been used by black women for generations and generations. The phrase and the concept is that God is able to make a way out of no way. Monica Coleman and Dolores Williams and other black women theologians have referred to the biblical story of Hagar. You remember the story from Genesis where Hagar, who was Sarah's slave woman, uh, Sarah, who Sarah gave to Abraham as a concubine to bear a child, Hagar, who became the mother of Abraham's first child, first son, Ishmael. Hagar was mistreated by Sarah, who acted out of jealousy, and Abraham ended up sending Hagar and young Ishmael away with inadequate provisions, some bread and some water that were not going to last long out in the desert. In Genesis 21, we read, When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. So Hagar sat and wept because she could not bear to see her child die from starvation and dehydration. But God saw the terrible, desperate situation that Hagar and, and Ishmael were in. And God called to Hagar, saying, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. And then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Genesis 21, verse 17. Monica Coleman and Dolores Williams and others point to the story of Hagar as a story that has spoken to black women for generations, women who have been subjected to, to slavery in, in, the, in, in history, bearing children conceived through no choice of their own, used and cast out when their presence was no longer wanted by those in power, women who before and after slavery have been faced with realities that appear to be insurmountable. But a phrase that has inspired many black women for a long time according to Monica Coleman and Dolores Williams, is making a way out of no way. God can make a way out of no way. That's what God did when Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. It looked as if they had reached the end of their journey. Yet God made visible to Hagar resources that she needed at the moment. And she found water for Ishmael and for herself. And they survived. They survived. 
God made for them a way out of no way. God is still making a way out of no way. Jeremiah was about to learn that he was dealing with a God who could make a way out of no way. Jeremiah said to God, Not so fast, Lord. I can't speak. I can't preach. You can't send me to the nations to be your prophet. I do not have the ability. But the make a way out of no way God had something to say to Jeremiah. Not so fast, Jeremiah. Don't say I'm too young or I can't be uh, uh, your prophet because of A, B, or C. I will give you what you need. I will put my word on your lips and you will speak my word to the nations and you will speak to anyone I send you to and wherever I send you. Not so fast, Jeremiah. I am the make a way out of no way God, the God who is not bound by our self-imposed limits, the God who is not impressed with our excuses, the God who will not stand back and let us talk ourselves out of a way forward because God is the one who is making a way forward for you and me. Jeremiah discovered that today. And today we are confronted with that, with that powerful image, that powerful story of the prophet Jeremiah. Sarah Lautensleger wrote this story, and I'd like to share this story with you today. Uh, Sue Zuling is a different breed of entrepreneur, she writes, delivering instant noodles on her bicycle to satisfy fast food appetites in central China. She wanted to use her business uh, acumen to spread the gospel message in a land where religion has been controlled or suppressed by the government for decades. Ms. Uh, Sue's father is a communist revolution veteran, and religion has always been considered a leading threat to communist rule. A Christian revival of sorts uh, ha has uh, swept through uh, China's uh, peasantry for some time when uh, Ms. Ms. Sue's life hit rock bottom. Until she was 30-something, Sue had never heard of Jesus. Her husband, after months of suffering, died uh, of, a series of a terminal illness, leaving her with young sons to raise, and astronomical medical bills to pay. She had sought peace of mind through several different avenues, and when a nurse who had cared for her husband suggested that she explore Christianity. While walking in the snow one day, she heard a voice calling uh, her to church, where she experienced a conversion. She began attending the state-run, state-approved Protestant church in her hometown, and her newfound faith gave her great solace in addition to enough self-confidence to step outside the box in one of the world's fastest emerging economies. She renamed her product Gospel Noodles, and fellow Christians began purchasing her noodles to the extent that she needed a production line for noodles and six vans to deliver them. Ms. Sue wanted to do something more for God, so she decided to invest her profits in a seminary to train leaders for spreading the Christian message of hope across China, and this bold undertaking set Miss Sue on a collision uh, course with the Chinese government officials. There's nothing unusual about using private uh, funds for religious purposes here in the United States, but it is risky business in China. Chinese officials uh, appreciated the contributions, financial and otherwise, that Christians have made to their communities, but they still eye Christianity as a potential threat to government, all religious faith as a potential threat to their government. They allowed the seminary to operate for four years, and then eventually they shut it down. After its closing, students and faculty alike scattered throughout the country, sharing the good news of Christ. On the back of Ms. Sue's business card was printed, Turn China into an aircraft carrier for spreading the gospel. God often chooses people to do God's work that others consider unlikely candidates and maybe in unlikely places as well. Throughout Scripture, God selects the young, the old, the weak, the outcasts, the poor, single parents, and, and all kinds of people, people that, that never saw themselves doing God's work that's precisely who God chooses sometimes to, to do the most amazing work, just as he did with Jeremiah. Sisters and brothers, are, are, are we talking ourselves out of God's call? Are we talking ourselves? Are we protesting God's claim on us? Are we telling God, go to find somebody else to do this work? I, I can't do it. Our make a way out of no way God can do it. 
our make a way out of no way God can give you and equip you and provide you with whatever you need to answer God's call to do the work that God wants you and all of us to do. So sisters and brothers in Christ, let's not say no uh, no to God. Let's not say not so fast, God. Let's, let's open our hearts and our spirits to the call of God in our lives today. For our make a way out of no way God, out of no way God is calling us, each of us today. Amen. I invite you to join me in affirming our faith as we say together these words uh, written by Bruce Pruer, walk and not faint. This have, have come, come to know, know. This, this is, is what, what we have, have heard. heard, the eternal is an everlasting God, creator of heaven and earth, who does not grow weary or faint, whose wisdom is unsearchable, giving energy to the meek and strength to those who have none. Even youth shall faint and grow weary, young athletes shall fall exhausted, but those who love the Lord Jesus and patiently put their trust in God shall renew their strength they shall soar with wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our next hymn is hymn number 618, How Firm a Foundation. The divine source is the one from whom all blessings flow. We have an eternal invitation to bring our resources into God's house to be used for the building of the kingdom and used as seeds so that there might be a continual harvest. These acts reflect the God who knows us and the God who calls us.
please join me for our prayer of dedication. Fount of every blessing, receive these gifts in the joy in which we bring them. May they bless your church universally, our community, and our world. May none suffer lack, and may we always give from generous hearts. May we always take joy in being blessed to give and to share with you and with each other. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 339, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have enjoyed the service. We hope it's been a blessing to you, and we hope this is the beginning of a great week for you. And we look forward to worshiping with you next time. God's blessings and peace be with you, sisters and brothers. And as you depart from this sacred time and space, do so fearlessly, for God's word is in you. Go and build beloved community wherever you roam and plant seeds of love, faith, and hope. Go in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Just it.